Oh man, can you believe it's 2020? I sure can't. I'm still processing 2016. What the f***? But now that it's a brand new decade, take a second and think about this question. What was the greatest game of this decade? It's a crazy question, right? There's been so many great and bad games. What's this? Ugh! And what even are the credentials for best game? Are we talking about quality, impact, innovation? Well, in that case, does the bowl of cereal I had this morning where I put the milk on the bottom count? I would usually say no, but this decade has changed my opinion on things. For each category, you could argue different games. The highest quality games like Dark Souls, Breath of the Wild, The Last of Us, The Witcher 3, Skyrim, and yeah, there's a lot more, are, you know, quality, but being a good game doesn't really make you the best game of the decade. Like, yeah, I really liked Outer Wilds and thought it was absolutely awesome, but that's just a bit subjective. It's missing that impact that makes it surpass all other games. But if it impacted gaming as a medium like Pokemon Go, GTA 5, and sadly, Fortnite, sure it's impactful, but by those standards would Battlefront 2 be the greatest game of the decade because of its impact on loot boxes? <laughs> Well, actually, maybe. It's really turned around. You should go replay it. And shoot, if there's been a decade of innovation for gaming, then the 2010s have certainly taken that award. This decade not only changed how we play games, but challenged what even constitutes as a game. What the f***? Take Death Stranding, the untitled Goose game, or literally any indie title on Steam. Sure, their innovations have changed gaming for the better, but... Come on, a walking simulator? That can't possibly be the decade's best game. Wow, it was actually really good, but that's subjective. What I'm saying here is there's an argument for just about every game out there. And of course, you're allowed to have your own opinion. After all, opinions are what makes us human. Seriously, go ask your dog what the greatest game of the decade was, and I guarantee nine times out of 10, they won't even respond. Hey Chewie, what's the best game of the decade? My soul is eternally trapped in this cute, ineffective body, but one day the wrath of Nephtholomew will reign supreme! Haha, <laughs> silly doggy. But I think there's just one game that's at the top of all three categories. And perhaps you have a faint idea from all the thumbnail that's in the thumbnail. The game that is high quality. Perhaps one of the most impactful games of all time. One of the most innovative games of recent memory. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. I'm talking about Fortnite. Seriously, what other game mixes the whole shoot mechanic with the run mechanic? Truly the game of the decade. Huh? What's that? Fortnite isn't the best game of the decade? Oh, that's the best game of the decade. That makes a lot more sense because the title and thumbnail. All right, yeah, thanks. Love you too. Bye-bye. Okay, the most impactful, innovative, and damn quality good game of the decade has to be Block Game, or better known as Minecraft. I really don't think any game can quite be held as the game of the decade. Look, some game can be a 10 out of 10. Amazing graphics, the best story, riveting gameplay. But for some reason, it just can't beat Block Game. There's a reason that 9 years, 180 million copies, and an on and off again borderline abusive relationship with its players later, it's still one of the most popular and beloved games by many today. I mean, do you think Fortnite will have the same love that Minecraft has had in 10 years? That's not even a rhetorical question. The answer is, of course not! And that's because Minecraft is lightning in a bottle. A game that shouldn't have been as popular as it is, but makes all the sense in the world when looking into it. So that's why I've come to the conclusion that Minecraft is objectively, yeah, that's right, you heard me, objectively the greatest game of the decade. Well, actually, Minecraft came out in 2009, not making it this decade. Wrong. It was officially released in 2011, making it this decade, so suck it! You know, I'm just kidding, I love every single one of you, but for my sake and all the other Minecraft official release date loyalists, seriously, you don't want to get on those guys' bad side, let's just agree that it was in 2011 making it this decade. And to all of you who still disagree with Minecraft coming out in the early 2010s, well, here's the door for people who still disagree with me that Minecraft didn't come out in the 2010s. The craziest thing about Minecraft is its rise to popularity was definitely not a slow burn. It had already become a well-known game in its alpha and beta stages, but by the time its 1.0 version had been released on November 18th, 2011, it was already looking to be a giant hit. In fact, when it was released, it was almost as popular as its recent resurgence in the past year. And if you're wondering why it got super popular this past year, well, that's because of... So it's always been a mega hit, and it's obvious why. What other game is nearly as innovative and different as Minecraft? 
that doesn't count. The absolute biggest reason Minecraft is at the level of popularity it's at is because it wasn't like anything anybody had ever seen before. What has to be Minecraft's most defining and innovative feature is that it plops you into a brand new world and says, hey, your name's Steve, and there are zombies, skeletons, spiders, creepers, endermen, and oh yeah, you're defenseless, and it's nighttime soon, so punch some f***ing trees! No other game quite compares to Minecraft's ruleless sandbox gameplay. Literally, the game is fueled by your imagination. And I think that's such a great gameplay tool that unlocks an unlimited amount of doors for possible ways to play. There isn't some set of instructions on how to play, f*** you. It's all up to what's in here. Your imagination, not the ridiculous amounts of hair. Have you ever heard the same story when it comes to Minecraft? Besides the very beginning where you punch trees for wood. When the entire game is up to you, there's an infinite amount of ways to play. Tired of being a law-abiding citizen? Just take some flint and steel, go to your nearest village, and teach them a lesson. Done with all the bloodshed and conquest? Literally become a f***ing farmer! You can do that! Fed up with life and see no hope? Well, Minecraft can't really help you there. I'd suggest seeing a therapist. But besides that one thing, you can do everything and anything in Minecraft. And that's the innovative piece that sets Minecraft apart from all other games. When the safety net is taken away, people become more creative and think outside the box. And I think that's what a lot of open world games have seemed to forget nowadays. You don't have to hold my hand and lay out everything in front of me. Just give me the means of breeding animals and I'll take it from there. And I think that's why Minecraft is still so different compared to many of the best games of the decade. As long as you have a bit of an imagination or a couple buddies to play with, this game can go on forever. Good thing it's lack of story is its only innovation, right? Wrong. Also, it's retro blocky aesthetic. Most of all the updates over the years. Minecon! Or that you're hoping to get. More hostile mobs. Really? I want them to hurt me Man, so bad. you like the punishment. I do. Dang. Well, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe not. You know what? No. Minecon is awesome. It may be a cringe singularity, but it's a testament to how popular the game has stayed over the years. Minecraft is honestly just innovation at its best. But innovation isn't the only key to making a good game. Like if I made a game about bread simulation where you literally play as a piece of bread, sure that's innovative, but of course it's never gonna be popular enough to become a real thing. Oh my goodness. Well, point is, innovation can't be everything. It's important to, you know, have a good game, and that's Minecraft's biggest thing going for it. Yeah, it's innovative take on the open world sandbox genre, complements the gameplay, but there's a reason people can spend tens of thousands of hours on this game. Okay, get help, but because it's addicting to play. Do alcohol, smoke drugs, or drink meth? Ditch that unholy substance and replace it with some good old fashioned Minecraft and I'll guarantee it'll get you a better high. Mix the two together and... Yeah, not a good idea. I can't count how many sleepovers my friends and I would build TNT castles or stage mini games. Such good memories where I would stay up till the AMs for the first time, screw up my sleep schedule, which in turn screwed up my work ethic. So now I have no motivation. Minecraft! And the main reason every kid below the age of 12 followed this game like a religious cult is because the gameplay is so addicting. Step one, punch wood. Step two, do anything you want. Not feeling the survival? Then be a chump and play creative. Done with both of those? There's like a whole other game called multiplayer that's arguably even better. It's quite literally impossible to explain all the servers, modes, ways to play over on the multiplayer. Hell, people started whole ass companies because of Minecraft. Maybe not the best idea, but the main goal was to provide a server for people to play with other people. I would say Hypixel and Mindplex were my go-to servers for three things. UHC, Skywars, and f***ing fun. I miss the simpler days where all you needed was a laptop, Skype, and a couple buddies to hop on so you could play a few games, get mad at each other, and then rage quit once you lose. But enough therapy. The gameplay is cool, dude. And what's weird about the most popular game of all time is there isn't much of a learning curve, even with the PvP. You just point, you click, and that's it. No fancy combos, no movesets, just know when to click and when to run, and hey, that's the gameplay. Wanna dump 10,000 hours into it? Well, to all the people who said, hell yeah, I've got nothing going on this month, well, it sure did pay off. So Minecraft wasn't just a popular game by chance. There's a huge reason that it stayed so popular for so many years, and a huge reason on how it even got popular in the first place. And that's all thanks to these wonderful guys and their mom's basements. See, Minecraft was the start of viral games. Games that didn't have regular advertisements that sold and were forgotten about in a year or so. No, nah, this game didn't take the conventional advertising like most other games but instead took a couple billion little mini advertisements in the form of YouTube views. 
not only establishing and growing YouTube's gaming scene, but it also helped the game get traction and popularity in the first place. It was a symbiosis of sorts where YouTube said, okay, I guess you can upload yourself playing a video game, loser. But in return, Minecraft got all that sweet, free advertising. Little did anyone expect, YouTube changed to a watch time based algorithm, which in turn propelled gaming and cough cough Minecraft to one of the most watched categories on the whole site. Not to mention it established YouTube as the internet behemoth it is today, you know, no biggie. So boom, careers were made, childhoods were enhanced, Notch sold Minecraft to a giant corporation. Uh oh. What seemed to be either a breath of fresh air or a get ready for an ass load of microtransactions, Mojang being sold to Microsoft for 2.5 billion was thankfully not a huge hiccup in Minecraft's life cycle. The game stayed on track, putting out updates, new content, bees. So selling to a big corporation couldn't kill this game. Time couldn't kill this game. And damn it, the time restrictions my parents used to put on my computer at age 11 couldn't kill this game either. I just had to go offline. Hell, even Fortnite, the latest viral game, hasn't been able to beat Minecraft. But why is that? Well, that's because Minecraft has had a permanent impact on gaming as a whole. The gameplay, the innovations, the impact. If there's a game of the decade, then Minecraft easily takes the cake. Not only did this game touch all of our wallets, but most importantly, our hearts. No other game has had the cultural impact that Minecraft has. And that's why I say with a firm belief that Minecraft was the greatest game of the decade. Well, that is until Fortnite kids grow up and think that Fortnite's the greatest game of the decade. We like Fortnite! We like Fortnite! We like Fortnite! Oh my god!